door frames, wall corners, windows, bars, one car wise camera hide behind virtually anything to spy on its subjects. Its cinematography fully embraces the thrill of voyeurism. And the question comes naturally, why? Two reasons can be found for these forbidden stairs, an intimately positive and a socially negative. Chow and Sue are vignetted in smaller frames within the frame of the camera, pushed together from the very first moment and slowly building the composed desire, as we watch, seduced by the elegant beauty. In a cramped Hong Kong, Carl Weiss paintings emphasize the chemistry, their closeness, just the wall and not even that, to separate the two from one another. Its tension, if not precisely sexual, of two people who are consciously duplicating the form of the partner's adultery, who are pushing the boundaries of a risky game. And we cheer for them, we prefer to think that the relationship is innocent, refusing to see that they are meeting in secret to act out fictitious scenarios. We are hypnotized by their charm as they are of one another. Their classy beauty induces us to sympathize for them from the very beginning, refusing to think that kind faces can seek darker meanings. We want them to break the rules of marriage, of society, justified by the adulterous partners, by us ourselves, sympathetic peeping toms of the unspoken feelings. We are partners in crime, film audiences spectating slices of lives we shouldn't be watching, self-acquitted voyeurs absolving the beloved victims. But for as much as we crave for a positive denouement, we are not the only one spy on the silent dance. Tu siempre me respondes, quizás, quizás, quizás. Carl Weiss' use of framing not only allows for Chow and Sue to develop a mutual desire and for us to sense it, but it creates a constant feeling that someone else is watching, that we are not the only observers, and our protagonists feel it as well. They are not only pushed by the frame towards each other, but also have to face unwanted questions and gazes. Mrs. Swen and Yama uninterruptly wanders in the corridors of the building, inviting Chao and Su to play mahjong or to eat together while studying them and their routines. They represent the Shanghainese community of Hong Kong. In a period of deep alterations of the city, they hold on to strict traditions in the unsuccessful attempt of not letting the culture fade. Their stiffness ironically oppresses a betrayed Su with etiquettes of the perfect wife. She knows the role society wants her to play, physically approaching Chao only when they are not themselves, and retracting from him in the other occasions. But in an emotional shattering moment, she searches and finds comfort in his embrace, and she's immediately punished for it, scolded by Mrs. Swan for her behavior, suffocated by the stiff collar of strict tradition. Compared to the partners who avoid our judgment and of the people around them by never being there on screen at all, Chao and Su are almost always the center of attention, judged by everyone, even by themselves. Their fear, their sense of guilt leads them to not speak their mind and to create their destiny where the love can only blossom in the memory of a pastime.